So continuing on um, that idea, when a patient has diarrhea from these antibiotics, we don't necessarily want to stop it and prevent them from going to the bathroom at all. We want to kind of hopefully dry it up a little, um, keep their fluids replaced. However, if we wipe a patient's good gut flora out and they have diarrhea and all of a sudden we are not keeping things moving along, we are allowing them to sit, we are encouraging a C. diff infection. So you want to give them agents to help stop them going so often, but not necessarily block them up. We don't want them having that C. diff, C. difficile bacteria sitting in their gut just festering and growing into an infection. So oftentimes when patients do take these medications, we'll encourage them to replace their good gut flora um, with say a probiotic capsule or yogurt that has active bacteria, anything they can do that's gonna keep that in balance. Carbapenems, such as meropenem, erdipenem, and azreenum, belong to, again, the beta-lactam class. They have a very broad spectrum of activity and there's not too much resistance to them yet, although we're seeing it on the rise. Um, they are active against gram-negative and gram-positive organisms, including anaerobes, which means gut that are, er, <laughs> bacteria that are deep down in the gut um, that don't necessarily need oxygen to thrive and survive. Um, they also, again, are active against many multi-drug resistant pathogens. They're primarily used to treat pneumonia, febrile neutropenia, intra-abdominal infections, diabetic foot infections, and um, polymicrobial infections. Again, we want to be careful in patients with documented penicillin allergies, specifically hives and anaphylaxis, because it is a beta-lactam structure. It's similar, it can cause the same reaction. I think as trianam is the only one that's different enough that you don't have to worry. So penicillin allergy, you need to use a carbapenem. As trianam is your go-to if it covers the drug that, or if it covers the bug that you are trying to treat. Quinolones, such as ciprofloxacin. Um, quinolones are used in adults for the treatment of some infections the use of the urinary tract. Um, sinuses, lower respiratory tract, GI, skin, bones, joints, and gonorrhea. ton of different uses there. Up until recently, they weren't used in kids because of the worry of tendon rupture as well as um, just not being a good drug to use in children. Recently, I think that's changed. They are used as a last ditch effort, just with extreme caution. So one of the things about quinolones is um, possible cartilage or, cartilage or tendon damage, especially in older people. They used to think it was both in older and younger, and now it's really just showing up in older people, which is why we can now use quinolones in children if absolutely necessary um, as a last sort of line option. Resistance has developed, um, because it was were so overused, resistance has developed to Pseudomonas, P. arudinosum, and um, S. aureus, which is staph. Um, we should always do culture and sensitivity tests before initiating these to make sure the treatment is um, necessary and appropriate. Side effects can include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, um, phototoxicity, super infection, CNS effects. I'm surprised it doesn't mention um, renal toxicity because these drugs are renally dose adjusted. If a patient has poor kidney function, we will dose adjust these. So for caution, older adults, especially with GI disease, children, adolescents, um, anybody doing strenuous exercise due to the cartilage and tendon damage, pregnancy and lactation, seizure disorders, and cardiac disease. Moving on to tetracyclines, very broad spectrum, not used as much as they used to be because of resistance that has developed. However, they are still active against some uncommon bacteria, such as rickettsia, chlamydia, um, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, etc., um, atypical pneumonia, and some sexually transmitted infections. Side effects can include nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, super infection, uh, photosensitivity, discolored teeth in fetus and young children, uh, retarded bone growth or slowed bone growth in the fetus and young children if mom is using it for the fetus. Um, so, of course, precautions, pregnancy, lactation, young children, people in direct sunlight all day, and renal disease. Um, doxycycline is preferred in renal disease. So to get through the rest of the chapter, because there is still a ton to cover, and um, at some points I'm just reading off the book, what I want you to do is go through, pick out the parts that are important, um, what the drug is treating, or what the class is treating, um, maybe some side effects, and any important information that you think sticks out to you. Um, because as I'm lecturing, what you should be realizing is that there's a pattern. 
I'm going through and picking out a few words that are important to me. Lucky, this book is short, it's sweet, it's not overly wordy, so a lot of the important stuff should just jump right out at you. For example, on the next page, under Amphotericin B, um, what does it use to treat? Severe systemic potentially fatal fungal infections. That's your basic Amphotericin B breakdown. Um, you use it for severe infections. Therefore, you can kind of sit there and think, okay, it's probably not going to be used too often because how many people show up with fungal infections? And then I'm going to look under the side effects and see maybe why it's not used so often. Nephrotoxicity jumps out at me. Um, the top two, headache, chills, fever, hypotension. This is an awful drug. It's a great drug because it's used to treat severe infections, but the side effects are horrendous. Um, and they're not rare. They're, they're common. They do happen. So that's what should be important to you about amphotericin B per this book, okay? Moving on to the rest of the drugs, you can do the same thing. What I want you to be able to do here is read through a drug or read through a class of drugs and figure out what's important. What do I need to pick up on um, in this section? Because at some point, this class is gonna be over, there's always gonna be new drugs, and you're gonna wanna learn new things about them. So it's important to be able to know what is pertinent information. Like I said, this book is sweet and short, so there's a lot of pertinent information. You don't have to memorize it all, but you do have to have an idea of what the classes do. So, if anybody has any questions at all, um, and read over the, I feel like there was a patient case somewhere back here. Um, those are always good to read over too, because they can kind of help walk you through um, case study A. They can kind of help walk you through treatment of an infection. So I hope you guys have a good overview of antibiotics, and again, if you have any questions, let me know.